So I had a um, a viewer recently who asked me about LP little a. He said, and this is this kind of question and comment uh, is very common in prevention science. So it may sound crass, but here's where it is. Uh, here, here's the question. Where are the bodies buried? Uh, what he meant was, yeah, you tell me that LP little a is a major, as, as Brad Vale and Amy Dunneen say in their book, <coughs> Beat the Heart Attack Gene, they call LP little a the mass murderer. Well, show me the bodies. I don't see all these people that are dead from LP little a. Well, <coughs> what you have is a whole lot of people that are having heart attacks. Um, this was a, the study that I'm going to cover today is a study that was uh, published in April of 2018 in Circulation Magazine by a um, Vanderbilt <coughs> researcher who's mostly focused on genetics. So we're going to cover two things. Number one, where are the bodies buried in terms of LP little a? And number two, GWAS and PWAS, genetic studies. Well, what are GWAS and PWAS? Well, we'll talk about those in just a few minutes. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E I started off as an ER doctor. Um, working in the ER can really encourage you to get into prevention. <clears throat> prevention is so much better than a cure. But it takes discipline and it takes... Uh, in order to discipline yourself you, to do the right kind of lifestyle issues, eat right, exercise right, you need to understand the science sometimes because that science helps motivate you when you, when you need to make some changes. So to the study itself, this, was the, this is the press release from Vanderbilt. Um, <clears throat> gene study uh, spots clues uh, to heart attack, heart, heart risk for statin patients. So <clears throat> one thing I'll say is I don't agree with the basic assumptions of the study. The basic assumption here is that um, if you have high LDL, you've got higher risk for heart attack and you just take uh, a statin and that should knock it out. Well, if you've seen five of my videos, even three, you know that's not what we think. We think that it really is more related to inflammation. However, <clears throat> uh, this is not the time to get into that debate. Uh, you can still get a lot of really good information out of this study, and I've covered the, the a couple of the points already. Number one, the uh, LP little a and where people are having heart attacks associated with it. And number two, how they discovered that using some new genetic tools. Um, <clears throat> it was in the journal, it was published, like I said, in the journal Circulation, Dr. Wei Ki Wei, um, who's in that uh, genetics and cardiovascular program at uh, Vanderbilt. And um, they also made use of Vanderbilt's uh, EMR. It's got, Vanderbilt has a few strengths and weaknesses, just like, um, like the rest of us. One of their strengths, though, is their uh, EHR system. Um, they were able to <clears throat> find a lot of these uh, patients that had heart attack despite LDL control using statins. And then they started doing what we call a GWAS. Again, I'll, just, I'll explain that in just a minute. The uh, Electronic Medical Records and Genomics System is called Emerge. That's the name for the Vanderbilt uh, EMR and, and uh, genetics uh, system. They found 3,099 people that had had the heart attack despite uh, LDL control. And they picked 7,681 um, controls. We'll talk about those in just a minute. What did they find? LP little a. Now, <clears throat> let's go back and talk about how they found that. This is the study itself. Again, circulation, very well respected uh, cardiovascular uh, magazine, uh, original research articles. LPA uh, variants are associated with residual cardiovascular risk in patients receiving statins. Dr. Wei Ki Wei, cir uh, circulation, and um, April 27th, 2018. Basically, <clears throat> what they did was, um, well, let's go, let's go through the rest of the abstract, and then we'll, we'll show some images, which make it a, a significantly clearer. 
Um, I won't go into the background and the assumptions. I've already talked about some of my concerns with the assumptions. They did a two-stage GWAS, uh, genome-wide association study, um, looking at 3,099 cases of heart attack despite uh, statins and 7,681 controls, people who had not had that problem. They used the uh, EMR in order to access this information and their genomic system. Um, so they went forward and found, okay, we find these people that have heart attack despite um, cholesterol control. Is there a genetic variation in there? And sure enough, there was. And so they said, okay, we see that genetic variation. Let's go back and find... Uh, what it is physically in the EMR that we may have picked up on these people that makes them different from the others. Again, it was LP little a. So, <clears throat> um, p value, uh, statistical p-value is 0 0.009. Again, not likely to have happened by chance. <clears throat> if you're still a little bit confused about GWAS and PWAS, let's just take a quick look at that. So with uh, what they're doing is they're taking cases. In this uh, study, the cases were folks that had um, heart attack despite uh, cholesterol control with statins. You're comparing that to controls, and they did, uh, it was about three controls for each case. And looking to see, you know, again, we did a full genome on each of those, or they did a full ge genome on each of those. And then they looked to see, so where are we seeing SNPs uh, at a much higher frequency here than here. Or what are the differences? Is there anything that these people have uh, that these people tend to not have? I just mentioned the term SNP. Let me uh, review and define. SNP stands for single nucleotide polymorphism. Many of us tended to think, especially if you're not familiar with genetics, think of it as a mutation. Is there a a mutation. The reason I didn't use that term is it's technically not. The mutation is like the first generation that you get the variation. After that first generation, it's called a polymorphism or a single nuclei, nucleotide. So again, this is not <coughs> a complete gene. It's a base pair. So you've got a variation in a base pair <coughs> in the genetic uh, uh, universe of this patient, those six billion base pairs. So now we've found the differences in genetics. We found, <coughs> excuse me just a minute, a, um, a significant difference in the, uh, the base pairs. In other words, <coughs> they tended to have those base pairs more than people that didn't have it. So you would assume that that tends to create risk. Well, so now we get to the PWAS, and the PWAS starts with the genetic um, variations. The, these were the controls, these were the, <coughs> were the cases. <coughs> um, and what you found among these cases when you, <coughs> excuse me, went back to the ER was, um, I mean the, e, the EMR, the electronic medical record, <coughs> you found LP little a. So again, we talked about a couple of different things. Uh, one is LPA is creating uh, heart attacks. And um, for those of you who still might be a little bit skeptical, heart attacks do lead to death and disability. <coughs> Pardon the sarcasm there. Um, <clears throat> now, if you, <coughs> the other thing that we, we covered was GWAS and PWAS studies. <coughs> If you're thinking those are going uh, back and forth, there's a reason for that. They are going back and forth. With the GWAS, you're starting with a um, the physical characteristics, in this case, uh, heart attack despite uh, statin control, and going to find a genetic variation or a phenotypic variation. With the PWAS, you're starting with the phenotypic variation and you're going back and saying, okay, what are the physical characteristics that we see <clears throat> in people with that genetic variation? Again, um, pardon me if that seemed a little bit repetitive. 
it um, I, because there's some uh, confusion in this process, I thought it was worthwhile to uh, to do that. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.